Mars is a horrible place. Deadly radiation, evaporating water, freezing temperatures and sharp, lethal regolith. To be perfectly honest, it's not the kind of place to raise your kids. However, Mars is not just one uniform blob. And just like a mountain refuge, there are places on the surface that are much more hospitable to life. Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video, we return to the Red Planet after a long break to discuss perhaps the most habitable spot on the entire world, the deep, dark Mellas Chasma. So let's get to it. The boiling point of water changes with atmospheric pressure. At standard pressure of one atmosphere, or 101 kilopascals, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Higher altitudes or low pressure environments lower the boiling point, while higher pressures increase it. For example, on Mount Everest, with lower atmospheric pressure, water boils around 68 degrees Celsius. In high pressure environments like pressure cookers, water can exceed 100 degrees Celsius without boiling. Mars has varying atmospheric pressures, from 30 pascals on Olympus Mons to over 1,155 pascals in Hellas Planitia. Hellas Planitia is an impact basin in the Southern Hemisphere. It's one of the solar system's largest and deepest impact basins, with a vast size and depth reaching up to 7 kilometers below the Mars datum. The unique topography means that the air is thicker, and if Hellas Planitia were somehow suddenly filled with water, the really interesting thing is that it wouldn't theoretically sublimate until the temperature reached 5 degrees Celsius, particularly if it was slightly salty, evaporating afterwards and eventually snowing down onto the surface. What I'm saying is it seems there's a temperature window between 0 and 5 degrees Celsius where water could theoretically be in liquid form on the surface of Mars, in Hellas Planitia. In this incredible image, we see water condensing on a Martian rover before it quickly evaporates. You can literally see the droplets before they dissipate, and this of course is on the surface of Mars too. Water on Mars behaves similarly to carbon dioxide on Earth. The triple point for water on Mars is 0 degrees Celsius and a pressure of about 0.00602 atmospheres. Regions like the bottom of Valles Marineris, underneath more atmosphere, could have higher pressures, and this would potentially allow for liquid water past those limits. Mellas Chasma is the deepest known canyon in Valles Marineris, and it's even deeper than Hellas Planitia. While Hellas Planitia is generally broader and deeper, Mellas Chasma has parts exceeding 9 kilometers in depth, and could be an ideal location for a Martian settlement. My somewhat primitive calculations suggest liquid water could exist between 0 and 6 degrees Celsius in Mellas Chasma, which gives an extra degree to work with over Hellas Planitia, and also with potentially warmer temperatures because of the lower depth and shelter from harmful radiation are provided by the valley walls. In midsummer in Mellas Chasma, under the sun, we could possibly see lakes and rivers even flowing. Crucially, of course, it would have to be in sunlight, as in the shadows the temperatures would dip very quickly and any water would freeze over. Furthermore, there is evidence for abundant past water inside Mellas Chasma. The discovery by the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter of hydrated sulfates, sulfate and iron oxides were found. Although not chosen as one of the finalists, Mellas Chasma was indeed one of the eight potential landing sites for the Mars 2020 rover, a mission with a focus on astrobiology. The floor of Mellas Chasma is thought to be quite young, and thought to be volcanic ash whipped up by the wind into aeolian windswept features. It also contains rough floor material from the erosion of the canyon walls. Around the edges of Mellas is also much landslide material. In a recent study of southwestern Mellas Chasma, using high resolution imagery, topographic and spectral datasets, 11 fan-shaped landforms were found. These fans add to growing evidence that Mellas Chasma once held a lake that had fluctuating levels. It certainly appears that channels within the structure formed at different times, meaning they were likely wet-dry phases in the history of Mellas Chasma. The whole region may certainly have had liquid water for extended periods. In the early Hesperian period, a Martin epoch are marked by widespread volcanic activity and catastrophic flooding that carved immense outflow channels across the surface of the Red Planet. Back to Hellas Planitia, the search for lava tubes is primarily due to the low radiation environment at this particular location, and several studies by NASA spacecraft have measured radiation levels in Hellas Planitia around 342 microsieverts per day, which is considerably less than other regions of the surface of Mars, which are almost double that at 547 microsieverts a day. Presumably these levels would be even less in Mellas Chasma, 
and possibly even as many as half the sievert daily dosage, or even more, depending on the size and coverage offered by the valley walls. And while this is certainly not ideal, for example, 80 microsieverts is equivalent to an average one-time dose to people living within 10 miles of a three-mile island plant during the accident, whereas 400-600 microsieverts is more similar to two-view mammogram. So we can withstand these things, it's just their reposition over time that can cause long-term damaging. In this graphic, we see a primitive settlement within Mellas Chasma in an area widely covered from harmful radiation, although not entirely. Of course, the more a roof covers our colonists, the safer they are. Large verandas also offer outside protection. It's not essential we live underground on Mars, just under cover like in this settlement, and perhaps with large valley walls like we can see here. Much of the radiation can be mitigated. Once the floor is paved over, another deadly risk, that of the sharp tiny pieces of regolith, is also easier to control in a canyon than it is in a wide open plain like Hellas Peninsula. That said, let's not beat around the bush. Even in a sheltered area like Melis Chasma, Mars is a deathly place, but living in Melis Chasma could not be unreasonably mitigated, similar to a six month stay on the ISS in terms of radiation doses, or potentially even much better than that. So what's not to like? We have potentially enough air pressure for occasional liquid water outside any potential settlement, warmer than average seasonal temperatures, and a place that is sheltered on all sides from deadly radiation and Martian sandstorms, as long as we're offered some sort of sheltered roofing, we could live outside for large part of our day, as long as we were wearing a spacesuit. Do you fancy walking outside on the veranda in a Martian canyon at a very pleasant 20 degrees Celsius, perhaps even with a small stream of water flowing at your feet? Sound good? Well, perhaps Melis Chasma is the place for you. Melis Chasma is a canyon inside the largest canyon structure in the solar system. Within it can be found some of the most high pressure and warmest temperatures on the entire red planet. As many as two kilometers deeper than even Hellas Planitia, it was considered for a landing site for the Mars 2020 rover. Perhaps in the future we can use this wonderful site, pave over the floors and bask in the Martian sunshine on a warm summer's day below a solid veranda, protected on all sides by kilometers thick walls. If we were to live on the red planet, but living underground doesn't suit us, the next blessed place is probably Melis Chasma, and maybe one day it will be a place that we can call home. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you'd like to support the channel further, you could consider buying me a coffee and I'll link this in the description. Thanks to those of you who have already done so, and if you have any videos or subjects that you'd like to see brought to life, don't forget to let me know in the comments below. It could be your idea that next week shows up. Take really good care of yourselves and look after your friends and family well, and I'll see you on the next one.